Playing with true spirit in the face of adversity and with what Simo described as a squad mentality, Eagles fans across not only Australia but the entire world celebrated as West Coast claimed their fourth premiership in front of over 100,000 people at the MCG. Welcome to what is obviously a very special episode of Eagle Review, proudly sponsored by Kennard Tire. I brought someone else to uh, host with us today. Have a look at the old girl, Benny okay. Roberts. What a, what a belter! Hey. Welcome aboard. Yes. Hopefully you can stay. I hope we can get more friends down the track. Correct. Zero touches from us had zero impact, but good to be here nonetheless. Didn't didn't the start of it just remind everyone of the horror that was 2015? No, not again. Five goals out the blocks from Collingwood. They were kicking them from all angles. Two of these goals are genuine goal of the year contenders for mine. To go unbelievable, wasn't it? It was indeed, but steadied the ship in the end, Benny, and just got it back on course, heading into a crucial quarter-time break. Did we ever. Just They just needed a settler. They weren't in desperate trouble, but they just needed a settler, and we'll take it any way we can get it. When really real, he's accidentally kicking them, ac <laughs> like Lecker did the week before. We'll take it, and then JK went. It was just a nice, some momentum heading into quarter-time, and it allowed them to <sighs> breathe out, just relax, and start to chip away, start to work on the margin, not panic, stick to structures, stick to process, and go from there. Well, the first three goals from the Pies out of their five or from West Coast Eagles turnovers, a bit shaky a little bit and couldn't do things down back the way they would have liked. And Collingwood, to their credit, took the most of their opportunities early. If they win the tackle count by eight per game this year, that's the second best in the AFL. They were 104 to 72 on grand final day, so that's a pretty bloody good effort in the tackling department. But the Eagles' dominance was in supply. They've always been a supply team. They like to defend off the back of that supply. 63 inside 50s. You're not going to lose too many games, albeit we almost did our best in this case. It only got in the front with the last couple of minutes as we'll get to 30, 63 inside 50s to 48 so that is a big supply win and in 2018 when we have marks more than 90 marks in a game we have not lost we had 104 at the weekend not the reason we won but it tends to show that when we can control the ball take a lot of marks therefore ends up in victory and you beauty Five point win, that's our last two flags. Combined total of six points in the end. Key players to miss, you really felt for the McKenzie, Gaff, Shepard, Nat, Nick Nat scenario. Yeah. In fact, all players who were out there, no doubt celebrating for the club, but would have been thinking, geez, we'd love to be out there with the boys. The third quarter, that was just an absolute blitzkrieg in the end. Jack Darling Didn't played. Jack Darling come out like a man possessed Well, didn't he need quarter? to, Ben Roberts? Yeah. Because he was very much under the pump, had six grabs in the third quarter alone, and a snagger as well. Won the disposal count, 96 7 to 80, inside 50s 20 to 11, just outscored Collingwood as well, 4 4 to 2 4. Scores level at three quarter time. Poised. We, we had Tommy Cole come in and say, I think this is going to be one of the best grand finals of all time. And it was the first time since 1937 that scores had been level at three quarter time. Then the drama unfolded. Then Benny. the drama unfolded. So we come out, you, get, you always just want to start well. Not, I was speaking of first hand experience, of course, yeah. You always want to start well in the last quarter of grand finals. Yeah. The Big boys hot. wanted to start well in the first, in the last quarter. And Dick and Colin would come out of the blocks. Two goals within about 30 seconds. And it was three inside a minute, it was all happening. Yeah, unbelievable scenes. And then for the boys to not panic, stick to the task like they had all year. Stick to the process, trust the process. We've heard that before. Vardy goals, JK goals, both teams trading goals, and it came down to the end there. When are we talking about Dommy? Where Let is, me get where to is it? Because, because Big Mason Cox was clunking everything. He missed that one that uh, just fell short late that probably would have made it very difficult. Mm, sit about and that one on your flight back home to America. At, we've, we've arrived, Stephen. We've arrived at the moment that we needed to discuss. Could have opened the show with it. Dommy Sheed. Well, here we go. So let's start with the fact that Liam Ryan and Dom Sheed yes. should have been off the ground. They were next in the rotations. Couldn't get them off. They were too busy winning the game on the other side of the Trying field. Trying to get them off couldn't because they were too far away. And the way things fall there, the two, Liam Ryan kicked it to Dom Sheed. How about that? Dommy Sheed has not missed a shot at goal in the last quarter of any game this year. Four, Four and straight. Oh. Any other kick? How's this? One goal, six. Oh, he just knows the moments, the big fella. He knows the moments. I mean, how's the kick, though? It was beautiful. Colin with supporters in the crowd loving it, too. I like, you know, a bit they, of banter. They want a shepherd in the end or a block. I think that's... Was 50, it a free kick? Well, it's 50-50. I think you're a Collingwood supporter, absolutely. He didn't take his eyes off the ball, and it looked like Willie could have been holding ground for him to mark it. I think that's a ballsy call. You see, playing you with see, two minutes left in a granny. You see them paid. You see them not paid. You see worse ones not paid, and you see softer ones paid. Agreed. Just one of those ones we're going to debate forever, and one goal that we will remember forever. Correct. Other good players, Stephen, I'll tell you who I liked, and so did the Norm Smith Medal Voting Committee. Luke Shuey, 34 disposals, 19 of those contested, 8 inside 50s, 9 clearances, 8 tackles, a bloody important goal before half time, 5 score assists, the next best for the Eagles were 2. I don't think he didn't do anything on uh, 
on Saturday that, oh, geez, didn't trouble the uh, stats man. He was unbelievable. He was everywhere and very worthy winner of the Norm Smith. I medal. agree. Dom Smith, uh, Dom Sheet second is, is very fair in my books. I think Mark Hutchings probably could have oh, got a vote. The job he did on Steel Side There has not been enough talk about this man's game. Can he I, listed in 09, picked up by the Eagles, said thank you very much. Come can on, I just tell you, list. how's his side bottom's lowest possession tally for the year was when, Stephen? Oh, was on it? the weekend, 14. When you're sending your best midfielder one out forward, you know he's battling. And Hutchie said that after the game, we knew that that was going to be a win once they moved him forward. He had 41 in the prelim. 41. He's had 14 in the grand final. Only seven kicks. Average is about 20. Hutchie's had more, tu more touches, 15, and kicked a goal. One of the great efforts. Oh, it's, geez, that was a bloody good game from Hutchie. Played his role to a T, as did the uh, co-host of one of the greatest radio podcasts of all time, Will Schofield. Didn't get beaten all day, Ben Roberts. Nope. Zero one-on-ones lost, zero turnovers, 100% game time. That's a lot of time to find a way to make a turnover or lose a one-on-one -on -one contest. Didn't do so. Jesus. Wasn't playing on a mug either. One of the best forwards in the competition. Yeah, playing on the goey. Unbelievable. Um, what about um, Liam Ryan, mate? He's debuted at the MCG. His first game at the MCG was a grand final. Only one other person has ever done that, if you don't mind. West Coast Eagles was the first side in the AFL era to go undefeated in Victoria for an entire season, 5-0. and Unbelievable stuff. And a little quick one. First time the West Coast Eagles have ever beaten Collingwood at the MCG without a waterman in the team. What we do need to go through is our final Kennards Roast for season 2018. Let's check him out. Let's start it off. Daniel Venables colliding with yep. Kennedy. This was absolute roast mania. And then Collingwood down, went down the other end and went, thank you very much. Boundary umpire, get out of the way, son. Don't know what you're doing there. Play on to the call, apparently. Uh, what about Richo snubbing Mark Lacrasse handshake? Is he flat he didn't win his own flag? I don't know, but Lekka left hanging post-game. You remember that? You remember that? What about Hutchie? Switch on, son. Just getting the cheesy, easy little sidestep there. Barris went for the big hoikin. Straight up and under. Did not travel the required 15. Langdon booting the ball in the back of Rioli. Actually worked out pretty good for the West Coast Eagles there. Great defensive play one there of the best, One of the best pressure acts you'll see for the day. Unbelievable. Speaking of Willie, tried mark of the year uh, on the MCG. Oh, that didn't end too well there. Mason Cox still learning some of the rules. The big American. Didn't know that you can play on uh, after the mark or when the play's been held dead for 30 seconds. Uh, the, the, I've never heard 100,000 fans have a laugh at one time. Uh, a couple of ones later in the game. Uh, Lysett missing this absolute soda from the front. Uh, you're not going to get many easier chances isn't that when the grand final got to make you most of them lucky? Anyway, we ended up winning to Goey. This was a big miss. Uh, running away from Schofield after falling over after the mark there. Missing that one. Not good. Darling's drop mark at the end there. Could have been unbelievable <laughs> scenes, but <laughs> no, paid off in the end. Paid off in the end. We had to get Coach's Box audio for that one. A fair bit happening in the Darling moment, it must be said. Uh, a lot of people tried tweeting me. That was just one in the end. Uh, Jeremy Howe, they wanted this for uh, holding or jumping on the ball. I think they made the right decision there. Cripper just having a little hand in. Uh, yep, uh, Liam Ryan uh, going back with the flight here. Probably just took his eyes off it slightly, but it didn't come back to bite him there. And now, the top three, this is for season, isn't it? Top three for the season. Sure. All happened to be grand final related. Mm -hmm. um, do you want me to run through them? Or Please. do you want to run Please, through them? You do. You do. Uh, the banner makers at Collingwood, utterly devastated, but you've got one job and they failed dismally on that one. Um, Tony Jones, any other year, this wins, the, this wins Roast of the Year for me. Telling us, well, have a listen. West Coast is now very well placed to go through to the grand final. And Neil, I've got to say, I think it would be a waste of a spot in the grand final if they get there. Well, there you go. Sorry, TJ, that we wasted a spot in the grand final for you. Can't win at the G Thumper. So How bad? How, How about bad? you go and work on some handballing all the time? Now, the winner, Stephen, I don't think there was any doubt if, if we went on to do what the boys were going to try and do all year, that this man wasn't going to win Roast of the Year. The great man. The great man, Robert Walls. Now, you uh, feel sorry for him. Well, just a little bit. He's going to get, you know, Pillar to post for the comments you make. You got to you got to make a prediction. He Unfortunately, backed going to the grand final. He did. He double doubled down, down on the pies. Eagle, uh, pies win and win well. Uh -oh. But if you call someone, they're going to win the wooden spoon and they win the flag. You cannot not get the roast of the year. So Robert, this one's for you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next year.